Hello and welcome to Crypto Cat Gear. In this video, we want to show you if you should be concerned about your VV investment right now, considering the new guidelines Apple has published in regards to NFT purchases. If you are new to our channel, please consider to subscribe and like our videos down below. Also, feel free to comment on our videos down below, respond to your thoughts with new valuable videos. The VV community is getting kind of worried. This could literally be a VV killer. <laughs> Like this, this type of change, if it applies to VV, it's basically a VV killer. Because there has been new guidelines published from Apple in regards to in-app NFT purchases. Let's clarify in this video if this could be a major threat to your investment on VV or not. So if we look through recent news, you will see that there are articles providing information about Apple changes to their in-app purchase guidelines. In their new guidelines, Apple states that apps are allowed to list, mint, transfer, and let users view their own NFTs. However, the ownership of NFTs shouldn't unlock any more features within the app. Plus, these apps can let users browse other collections, but they shouldn't show external links, buttons, or call to action to purchase NFTs. Users can only purchase NFTs through Apple's in-app payment system. The company is also prohibiting apps to use other mechanisms, such as QR codes or cryptocurrencies, to give special access to users. Let's have a look what the exact terminology is here. The new guideline states that apps may not use their own mechanisms to unlock content or functionality, such as license keys, augmented reality markers, QR codes, cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrency wallets, etc. Especially that you are not allowed to use augmented reality markers, let most of the people in the VD community get freaked out. I think that this could be massive news. What is going on? Like, we need VD to clarify this right away because yeah. That is the only utility that's on this app. So what do we have currently on the VV app? Is it really augmented reality markers or something else? Therefore, let's watch a comparison between marker-based and markerless augmented reality and let's decide what we have currently on the VV app. Being among top 10 AR developers worldwide, we know the answers. There are two main types of AR, marker-based and marker-less. They both are doing pretty much the same thing, showing augmented reality. This type of AR is the simplest, easiest to produce and most available since it supports the biggest variety of devices. A marker can be anything as long as it has enough unique visual points. Images with lots of corners and edges work especially well. Typical examples include logos, packaging, posters or brochures and objects, QR codes as well. Often a product itself such as a drink scan, bottle or even machinery can be recognized as a marker. One of the marker-based AR features is called Natural Feature Tracking. It can literally track any static object that you learn it to track – a chair, car, or even a house. Main requirement is – every marker has to be unique. It is not enough to put the same image and change the title on it so it shows different content, for example. You do need a new graphic for every single piece of content you'd like to be presenting. The most important limitations of markers are shape, contrast, and size. Marker could be flat, cylindric, or cubic. Typically, the bigger and more contrast markers are showing better stability in performance. Maximum distance from device to the marker is up to 10 diameters of the marker. The smallest allowed marker size is 2.5 cm in diagonal. And you have to strictly avoid glossy markers, as when moving around, camera reads the reflection as a constantly changing marker. In order to perform, marker has to be all the time in the field of camera view. So, users' movements in the physical world in interaction with the AR experience are limited. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of marker-based augmented reality activations, going from the simplest to the most sophisticated ones. If your activity is dedicated to a particular place or object, for example packaging activation or exclusive content for a magazine or in-store promo, marker-based AR is a proper solution. System places content above the marker and positions it accordingly. 
marker could be covered by content partially or completely. If a marker is, let's say, a mural, it could be brought to life with 2D animations overlay on some of its parts and transparency on unanimated parts of it. A seamless feeling of moving 3D art on the wall evokes the fascinating emotions. Markers can also serve as a launcher. Say spawning a 360 scene would put a user into a more immersive experience. So what type of content can we place in marker-based AR? It could be text, image, video, audio, 2D animation, 3D object, 3D animation or complex 3D scene, 360 video, a game mechanic, or even all of those together. It's a great tool for educational purposes or virtual guidelines when you put, say, a virtual engine in AR in order to train engineers on how to maintain it. One more important decision to make is whether your markers and content is going to be up in the cloud or locally in the application. In marketing, marker-based AR is good for reaching wow effect, interacting with various packaging activations, or expanding social impressions using promo materials such as animated logos or even simple games tracked to a marker. Depending on the type of recognition you would require, a developer should suggest the most suitable package these ready-made solutions have to offer. For example, children are very time-sensitive, they hate to wait. Thus, in our app for the non, we have created the application where you're only downloading all the content once you're installing the app, but you have no waiting time when you're using it. So, decision around having the content locally in the app or out on the server will influence the concepting, mechanics of interactions, and future life of the app. Do you consider changing the content you're presenting, for example? That would also be an influence point. For images recognition, there are a number of players on the market that provide ready-made solutions, such as Vuforia, EasyAR, Vikitude, and so many more. This will directly influence your budget, since those SDKs are license-based. Planning your next marker-based AR experience, you need to keep in mind technology limitations, creative content ideation, and your easy but interactive engagements with the user. In order to start markerless AR experience, user has to scan horizontal surface like floor or table, and in more rare cases, vertical surface such as a wall. The system is analyzing environments to find correlations and differences between pixels and then defines virtual coordinates related to the real environment. This brings up the main limitation of markerless technology. Surface needs to have some kind of natural or artificial pattern. Lines, spots or textures would help here. Flat white floor in the studio is tracked quite badly, as well as most of one color walls. But it's not really a big problem since it's really hard to find a completely plain surface in the real world. Much higher requirements for the developers and users' hardware is one of the main concerns about markerless technology in comparison to marker-based ones. You will need iOS version 11 and up, iPhone 6s and newer, or Android version 4.4 and up, Samsung A7 and newer devices. Augmented reality market is growing and developing. The technology is evolving rapidly, which creates the new level of capabilities. Thus, there are new interesting and engaging cases that are emerging on the market. So the tracking part is done, now what? Basically, anything you could come up with is possible at this point. Markerless AR actually comes with numerous advantages. The core one is users are able to initialize the application anywhere, making it far easier to take the experience to any place and time and share with others at any convenient point. Markerless AR gives freedom of motion and expression. You can literally create any experience and put any type of content in it. 
including complex or interactive things like moving 3D objects correlated with the real world, multiple users in the same environment, mix real with virtual, put 2D above 3D, or even open a portal to a virtual world for immersive storytelling. This technology is big in e-commerce and retail industries. Augmented reality is used to place the 3D objects in the real environment or try the product on a person. User can also measure environment to make sure products will fit. From simple things like a coffee machine manual being presented right in your office, no need to explain it every single time. Let the augmented reality do it for you. Conventional instructions should be replaced with a very visual tool. This could be a type of onboarding for self-service products. Technology also supports multiple surface recognition, so if you place an object on the floor and then move the camera to the table, this object can jump there according to the new defined coordinates. Multiplanes are useful when you're surfing through a wide catalog of products. The most complex solutions are becoming the reality when you blend the newest advances of the mobile era. For example, when combining GPS, velocity meter or accelerometer with image recognition, we can create AR that is able to provide a more accurate location-based information and services, such as walking directions or road signs, or generate outdoor AR activities which is priceless during marketing events or road shows. Ideas like marketing quests where users explore a brand store in order to find hidden virtual rewards become real. In combination with headsets, location-based markerless AR can widely help people with special needs, safety navigation in the city or hospital environment. The phone can also understand the mesh of the real world, if that's applicable. Markerless AR allows you to place portals, literally doors to a 360 video or 3D scene which users can explore. The scene can contain objects or triggers for additional interaction features. It's perfect for immersive storytelling or specific showcases like one of our demos for the Kitchenware Showcase. Placing the objects in a natural setting to show how organically it would look together. More advanced features could be customizing this place and choosing the products out of a catalog. This could even be a way of approving the design project with your interior designer. Why not? And of course, with Markerless AR, we finally have the access to one of the coolest augmented reality features – multi-person interaction in one environment and sharing AR experience. This technology is developing over the last couple of years. Apple just released a new version of their AR kit on WWDC 2019. We believe the future of markerless AR is in multiplayers, especially given the transition to 5G technology this year. Such experiences would put the engagement in AR to the next level. So many exciting cases are about to happen thanks to the ability to interact in the same AR space with a number of people. So guys, let's not get freaked out from some people in the community that haven't done their research yet. The bad news is that worst case scenario, like Vivi's gonna have to take away their AR, their AR functionality. And then like, what are you left with? That's the only utility you left you with can't hope. Add features. hope. You can't have features. You can't add utility. It's hope of the future. But on the flip side, the benefit. What if it is an attack on Vivi? Cause Vivi is really the, one of the only projects with like crazy utility. I guess some projects link to other things, but. Vivi is really the only one with these augmented reality. Like, that was re very specific, the augmented reality part. Vivi is pretty much the only one doing that. And basically what this does is this forces Vivi. If these, these laws and stuff is going to be enforced against Vivi, that basically makes Vivi just a marketplace like every other NFT project. Except for they still have the best IP. But yeah, like it literally forces Vivi to be like every other marketplace. 
and it limits what you can do to only be in a marketplace more so than all the goals and ambitions that VB actually has to build this business. So <clears throat> I, I'm hoping the collectibles, like the collectible title and the collectible routes to collectible marketing from VB is enough to overpower this, honestly. Because yeah, like th this does kind of seem like an attack on Vivi now that I'm thinking about it. Augmented reality, that was very specific and Vivi's the only one doing that like that. On Vivi, what we have is clearly markerless augmented reality and in our eyes that's super bullish for Vivi as it is now even more difficult for competitors that are using marker-based augmented reality to enter the NFT space. People from the industry pointed out that these changes could have serious implications on the functionality of Web3 dependent apps within the Apple ecosystem. Until now, they might be used NFTs as a way to thwart Apple's App Store fees and simultaneously as a token or key to unlock features for users, but that won't be allowed anymore. Apple just wants to have a bigger slice of the pie, and that's why they are restricting their marketplace for NFT purchases. So there is no reason to worry about. You should even be more excited now. Also, if you think about what Meta is doing currently and comparing it to Vivi. Notably, Meta has started rolling out features for users to show off their NFTs across both Instagram and Facebook. The company has also expressed a desire to open a marketplace for artists to sell their digital creations. If they want to integrate the AR features for NFTs in their iOS app, they would have to follow the same rules as Vivi as well. Vivi is going in the absolute right direction as even Meta is following their path. With that said, we are already at the end of our video. If you liked our content and you want to see more videos like this, please give a like down below and consider to subscribe to our channel. Your Cryptocacura.